I'm Chef Joe Arp. In the South, food is our passion, and I'm on a mission to reinvent the classic Southern cooking we all grew up with. I tour the South to find local recipes and bold new flavors. Then I mix in a lot of love, a little spice, and turn up the heat. South of Madness. <laughs> hey guys, it's Chef Joe here, and you're tuning into South of Mad Love, where we're taking old school recipes and adding some modern flavors. So let's get ready to take off, guys, because we're going to start this show with a little bit of she crab soup, and then we're going to cut it on. We're going to roll it over and do some crab cakes. We're going to start out with blue crab from Maryland, guys, right here. Watch this, guys. We're going to get started with a little bit of a, we're going to saute our, our vegetables up real quick. So what we want to do we're going to hit this with just a little bit of a uh, grapeseed oil. Why do I use grapeseed oil? I use it because it's got a high smoke point. If I threw olive oil in there or butter, we would be smoking and then we would have brown butter. So we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to get this going, right? And let me show you guys, we're going to take, so we're going to put some shallots in here. Let me show you this. So the key to this is we want to saute all of our vegetables. We want to render them down just until they're soft, right? As soon as they get soft, we're going to go like this, all right? And then, it's a little trick here. A little trick here to some really fast small dice. Ready? Let's get a little sizzle going. Oh, I feel it. I feel it. I hear it. Let's go with some carrot. So we're kind of going to do a mirepoix. Mirepoix is a carrot celery, onion, and what that does is it's going to build this first layer of flavor. So old school ways of doing this would be a roux, right? Classic flour and butter. So you have your glutens and you have your butter. So we're going to go ahead and take the rice. Going to kind of stir this around a little bit. We're going to add some tomato paste. We'll take and stir that around. We're going to give this all kinds of mad love. So we'll take the mad love, let this saute a little bit, and then we're going to take a little bit of celery. And you'll see, guys, it starts to become translucent. As that color changes and gets translucent, that's what we want. That's what we're watching, guys. You want to cut these real thin because we want to cook this out. We don't want to, you don't want a hard piece of celery in your she crab soup. Once we get it diced down, throw it in there. Again, we're building flavor with a mirepoix. This here, guys, is just simply a little bit of chicken base. We're gonna take that and go in, start to mix everything. All right, let's add some more flavor. We're gonna go a little bit of pink salt and a little bit of pepper. Go a little bit or a lot of bit, you know, however you feel. I like a lot of pepper, so I'm going to do it. Now, that's another thing, guys. Recipes are just recipes. I like to do different things. I like to pull different things. So let's go to the pantry. So I'm cooking at home. Chef Joe has one key thing, cash. Anybody know what cash is? It's a seasoning blend that I made because it's one thing that I do believe every dish that you make at home should have cash. Cash is crispy, acidic, salt, and heat. If you put those four things in your dish, I promise you it's going to be delicious. That crunch, that salt, that heat, little bit of citrus is going to kick it up. We're going to keep kicking it up here. Let's check it here. You got your chicken stock, salt, pepper, kind of a little mirepoix there. We're going to take Chop up a little bit of parsley here. So when I do this, look, same thing with cilantro. Everybody says, you know, it takes a while to cut up the cilantro, but as you, if you hold it tight, and we're coming in here like this, all right, then make a quarter turn. It's that simple, guys. It's that easy. Learn your cuts, learn your basic things, your basic mirepoise. Give it some mad love, and your flavor profiles are going to build. Because I went to school in Baltimore International Culinary College, so blue crab is near and dear to my heart. It's one of the things that I just really love. It's a sweet, delicate flavor that we can play with. But one key thing, guys, 
do not mask your ingredients. If you're paying for a good ingredient, use that good ingredient without just covering it up. You have a very mild, delicate flavor in, a, in crab meat, so don't overpower it. You don't want to put too much heat because you want to be able to taste the texture of the crab meat. All right, so now we're going to add, so we've got the rice, right? And we've added the chicken stock. So ready? Go with that. We're going to hit it with the water, and then we're going to kind of hit that up. So that chicken stock now, we're also going to reduce that down. So we want to turn our heat up just a little bit at this point. Once we get that rolling, so you've got chicken stock, you've got your mirepoix, you've got all that, and then we're going to hit it. We've got cream here, and we got sherry that we're actually going to finish it with. But now let's kick it up a little bit. I'm putting just a touch of Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. One of them things. We're going to do it. But right here, guys, I say Cajun Creole. Now, what did I say about having cash? Cash is this right here is got the heat. So we're going to go in with a little bit of heat here. Got your heat rolling. Yeah, let's go some more heat. Throw it up, baby. You got to get some heat, get some city to get things going, man. Get things going. And here we go with the lime. Gonna hit that with some lime. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Ooh, I wish we had smell of vision, guys. It's time for it. We, we got all this stuff. It's time. Whoa, it's time for some smell of vision. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Don't drop your spoon in your soup, guys. Pay attention to what you got going on. All right, guys, this right here is going to mellow as you see these flavors start to blend. You'll see the reduction going in. If you see here, we got a little bit of boiling going on. So we're going to let that reduce. And guys, we're going to be right back. We're going to let this cook down. We'll see you in a second. You guys sit still because South of Mad Love will be right back.
I grew up in a small town in Wilmore, Kentucky. Now, here's the cool part, guys. I call it a one red light town. Well, one side of the street is Asbury Christian College. The other side is Asbury Theological Seminary. But what that does is all my friends were missionary kids, and I would go over to their houses, and I was eating food from Thailand, from Bangkok, China, Russia, you name it. So the culture, here I am in small town Kentucky, but getting culture from all these other countries. It's one of the most beautiful things and part of why I have such mad love for food. You know, dinner time at my house was, you know, it, it has its ups and downs because it's a gathering place, right? You always know it as a gathering place. And I had a father who was a 100% disabled Vietnam veteran, right? And, you know, he came home with issues. A lot of soldiers did. And so it wasn't always the best of times. But I can tell you some of the best of times were at dinner. And that's where, that's where I found what I do when my mother could... Uh, bring a platter into the kitchen. And when I saw the looks on people's faces, I knew right then what I was gonna be and that I would forever be a part of food. All right, guys, we're back. We've got the she crab soup. Uh, it's reducing, all of our stocks got reduced. So what we're gonna take from here, here's what we're gonna do. This is where the love comes in. This is where the mad love comes in. So as we've got that, right guys, we're gonna take about a cup of heavy cream, drop that heavy cream down in there. Man, I'm telling you, what is that? That's another layer of flavor. We're on South the Mad Love, kicking it up, kicking the flavors up, baby. Now watch this, look at that. As that, we're just building, guys. You just keep building that flavor. Let me see here. Now, guys, one of my things, too. You're cooking. Taste the food. Taste it. Do not wait till the end and serve your guest and then decide it needs salt and pepper. You've got to taste it. So right here, I'm going to taste it, right? Shut the front door. It's time for some cash, and then it's time for a little added secret, right? We told you we're gonna kick it up. We told you, right? I promise you. So now we're gonna add a little bit of black garlic. What is black garlic? Most of you don't know, because I didn't know. I'm learning every day just like you're learning every day. All right, guys, black garlic. Black garlic is garlic that's been fermented. It's got your oils in there. You want to keep that in there. Now, as you'll see, see how it just real soft. So what we're going to do, as that heats, it will dissipate. So we're going to break that up. And what did we just do? Guys, you got to keep on building layers of flavor and you build the love that everyone, let me, look, when people gather around the dinner table, it's one of the reasons I became a chef. Because believe you me, when people come in, when I bring a platter of she crab soup, guess what happens? Everybody be smiling. Everybody be eating. And that's no matter where you're at in life, no matter what's going on in your life, good, bad, or ugly, sit down and eat. Enjoy mad love. Break bread together, guys. All right, all right. So here is the reduction going on, a little bit of bubbling. Now what we'll do, and we're not gonna hit this right now, but as we finish this, we will take and finish it with a little bit of sherry on top because then we add another layer of flavor, guys. We just keep on getting it down. Now I thought, I tasted it, right? When I tasted it, I thought a little too much salt. I may have went overboard with the salt or the Creole seasoning, which is going to kick it up. So I'm going to add either sugar or lemon, lime, orange. These are the kind of things that can pull, pull salt out. So as we go here, we're gonna add this. Now, obviously I could add some water, reduce, but we wanna add, I'm adding the citrus. Got that in, and now we're gonna go with the cash. What is cash? It's cash money, because this dish is gonna be nothing but money. And this is how we're gonna put some of this in here, 
cash, all right? Crispy, acidic, salt and heat, every dish I want it in. This is kind of how I cook, guys. This is the secret to what I do. This is how I do it. If you have that kind of flavor profile, you're gonna be, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> your family's gonna love you, your friends are gonna love you, and guess what? Your girlfriend's gonna love you. I guarantee that one. So we can reduce this. All right, guys, we got the sherry. We're gonna get cleaned up here a little bit, and we're gonna, what we're gonna do next, once we get cleaned up, it's gonna be time to, we're gonna actually take, because of the rice and the thicken, we're gonna take and actually blend the she crab soup. And what's up next, guys? When we get that done, we're gonna come back and make you some beautiful Maryland-style crab cakes. We'll see you in one minute. Sit still, South of Mad Love will be right back. Welcome back to South of Mad Love. Let's get ready to do some cooking. Hey guys, we're back and we're about ready to kick up the volume another night. So we're getting ready for some Maryland style blue crab cakes. Now guys, let me just tell you something. I told you I went to school in Baltimore, right? The home of the blue crab. Well, when I was in culinary school, I used to go downtown, right, to the Inner Harbor, and I would go to this, this old guy's house, right? He had a little stoop, and he sold crab cakes out of it. So you would go up there, and you would sit down, and this guy would go into his home kitchen and bring you one of the most beautiful crab cakes you ever had. So what do I say? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm just going to take a couple of pieces of Wonder Bread. I'm going to cut cut off the edges, right? And then I'm going to put a little glove on here because I'm going to get a little, little bit dirty here. So we're going to put some cream on top of this Wonder Bread. All you older guys, don't get nervous out there. I'm just putting gloves on to clean this, right? So we got this. And we're only going to use some drops, guys. So what we want to do, this is heavy cream. Heavy cream is just going to go and we want it to soak into that bread. This right here, folks, is going to be our breadcrumb. 
and the breadcrumb, the reason why it's done this way, because I don't want my crab cake to be a crunchy piece of crap. I want really good white crab meat. The cream and the white bread actually plays as a flavor profile to the crab meat. So we're gonna take this, cut these down, and don't worry, however this comes out, you're gonna see, you'll go, oh man, someone's turning to mush. That does not matter, because that's what we kinda want it to do, because we want it, when we put that crab meat in, we're gonna fold it, we're gonna fold it over so that we don't, uh, we don't, if you're buying lump crab meat and you're paying for it, let's not break it up. Let's not break it up, because we want to fold in our crab, we got just a touch of mayonnaise here. Again, just a touch. People put a cup of mayonnaise in there. Touch of Worcestershire. Little bit of Old Bay. I use a spicy Old Bay, because you, you can put a hot sauce in it, right? But the hot sauce, again, is gonna overpower it. I want a little bit of spicy Old Bay. And why do I still use Old Bay? Because you know what? It's tradition, I love it. Don't mess with it. It's really cool. But we are gonna add a little bit of lemon to our dish, to our crab cake. Again, not too much. Touch of salt. Little bit of fresh ground pepper. Alrighty, and then we're gonna take this parsley, a little bit of parsley in there, and I do just a drop of oil into it, and then we're gonna crack an egg. Let's crack this egg. Turn that in. If you get a piece of white in there, you know what? Get rid of it. You don't want Uncle Uncle Tom having any, any little bit of egg in the crab cake. So we're gonna take that, we're just gonna bust the up yolk here. As we bust this yolk up, going right into the crab, right? All right, now is the time that I told you about. Making crab cakes, guys, making crab cakes. I want to just pull this apart, look. We are not mixing it. Now when I come in like this, this is very important. I am folding, I am not ever, ever mixing. I'm never mixing like this because I'm breaking up that crab that I just paid so much money for. We don't want to do that. And as you see, guys, look, we do not, you don't see no brown bread crumbs. You don't see no bell peppers. You don't see, look, keep that out of there. Take the bell pepper and throw it away. Put it in the garbage. That's not mad love, guys. That is not at all. All right, let's take a look over here. Look at this. This is my she crab soup that we got working here. And it's time, guys. We're gonna take this. We're gonna put this all together. The crab cakes are sitting here. And let me tell you something. We're gonna be right back and we're gonna plate this up for you and we're gonna eat. South of Mad Love will be right back.
Welcome back to South of Mad Love. Let's get ready to do some cooking. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. It's time, it's almost time to eat, right? So I'm just, all I'm gonna do now is it's time to plate, time to eat she crab soup and some Maryland style crab cakes. So we got our, our crab cakes, right? We together, let's go ahead and put a little, just ball that up a little bit, right? Now here's another technique you can use if you're not using jumbo lump. You can also, once your crab cake's patted, you can take it and put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes and it'll help it stay together in the oil in your cast iron skillet. Now you can, you can deep fry these, you can cast iron skillet, you can bake them, your choice. I like putting them in the cast iron. Get a little smoke going on there, a little bit of smoky flavor. We'll just let these puppies go real quick. And as we do that, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We got that, right? So, whew, look at this. Now, this is another secret, guys. Do not, we put some crab in there, but then top it with your crab. Crab is pasteurized unless we're getting it straight out of Baltimore and we're getting fresh crabs, but look. We're going to put that crab meat right in the center. I want you guys to get plenty. I want you guys to eat good. A little bit of lemon there. And then we're going to hit that top with just a little pepper. Oh, little pepper, a little salt. We're going to serve this up to you guys right here. Now, I would finish that with just a touch of nutmeg fresh nutmeg and then we're gonna hit that with just a touch of sherry Woo! let's get ready to rock and roll let's see here did I burn my crab cakes no I did not I got them perfect baby look at that all right let's turn our heat off remember I'm reaching across because I, I won't hair on my arms <laughs> we got it guys look uh-huh the perfect Maryland style crab cake. Guys, we're gonna cut back. We'll see you next week, but thanks for coming and thanks for listening. Good eats.